Yes YouTube, welcome back to another video and thanks for joining me. So in today's video we're going to be going over how to care for Black Tiger Darios. So if that's something that interests you, then make sure you stay tuned. Without further ado, let's get on with today's video. Okay, so like I said, in today's video, we're gonna go over the care and requirements for keeping black tiger Darios. They're also known as pajama Darios, as you can probably tell because they've got two thirds of their body covered in red and creamish stripes and the front of their face and a little bit of their body is sort of a blackish gray color. Now, this is predominantly more prominent in the males. The females do tend to be a lot more washed out and more of a beigey color. But a lot of the time people mix up what a male and a female is in this sex just because a lot of the time the more dim coloured fish tend to be classed as the females but this isn't actually the case. So a lot of the time the more dominant male will be the most colourful and display the most and similar to in this tank. So the females don't have a little black spot on their back fin which is always a good telltale sign. Now I did think I had a male and a female in this tank, but since learning that, I realized I've probably got two males, one dominant and one not as dominant. So typically these are found in slow moving water, they tend to be soft sort of water in the Myanmar area in Borneo. Now they are part of the perch family and they do, they are cave egg layers as well. So it's really important that you keep hiding space and things for them to feel secure. But we'll go on to that a little bit more detail later in the video. So if you're thinking about keeping some black tiger Darios, you're gonna to wanna to know what sort of tank you're gonna need. So this is an ADA 45P, and this is plenty big enough for a pair like I have. Well, I thought it was a pair, it's probably two males. But if you want a breeding group, then you'd probably need to keep multiple females and a male and try to try and diffuse the aggression. Obviously, the bigger the tank you have, the more Darios you're able to keep and, and allowing them to then create their own territory and to start fighting as much as you can. So these are quite shy fish to an extent, but the more hiding spaces you provide, the more you'll see them and the more active you, they'll be. So the more you'll get out your fish, which is really, really important. As you can see in this tank, is a planted tank. It's got uh, bogwood and rocks and plenty of little hiding spaces and caves for them to hide in. So they do create their own territories in there. So I would say it's really important to add things like bogwood, um, any driftwood, anything that they can create a territory around. Obviously rocks are really good, making little crevices. Now in terms of the type of water you want to keep, naturally in the wild they keep in softer water but they are quite adaptable to a lot of setups and you can use pretty much tap water with them. Now they don't need a specific parameter necessarily, I would just advise you keep it consistent. In terms of the tank temperature, I would always keep it roughly between anywhere between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius and you should keep them thriving all year long. Now they do go in highs and low temperatures during their natural seasons in the wild, but I would recommend, I keep this tank around about 23 degrees and that's perfect for them and obviously keeps the plants healthy as well. Now when it comes to filtration, you want to try and consider the flow of the tank because they do appreciate quite slow moving waters. Now the hang on a back filter would probably be perfect or a small internal filter. Now I use a Awaze Filter Smart 60 on this and that does have quite a low flow. I am going to upgrade it soon but it won't be a strong enough flow not to suit these fish. So I'll leave a link down in the description for that because I think this is a perfect filter and I always think canister filters are better because they hold more media and beneficial bacteria. Now in terms of lighting, it doesn't really matter if you're not keeping plants in the tank, you don't necessarily need any particular lighting of any kind. Obviously if you're going to keep plants, now I've got the um, Twin Star 450cc on this. Again, I'll leave links down in the description, but this is a high light, high tech setup and it's mainly for the plants. You don't need a really expensive or high tech light. You could use a shop light or anything that comes to mind just to light the tank and give them that photo period of 10, 12 hours a day. Now the most difficult thing when it comes to caring for these animals is sometimes they don't accept flake food, pellet food, or normal traditional all-purpose food. So you may need to resort to frozen foods like brine shrimp, daphne, and that sort of thing, or also live foods is really good for these animals. Now you can give them tuberfex, bloodworms, daphne, baby brine shrimp, but if you're gonna use tuberfex and bloodworms, try and keep them to a minimum because these fish do have a tendency to be able to get overweight and are quite gluttonous. So you just need to keep an eye on that and maybe offer those as a treat. Now a lot of people will really use these fish to try and keep their shrimp population under control. And this tank I do have a bit of a pet snail problem and they are keeping on top of that for me. You probably do take some of the Bloody Mary shrimp out, the babies, 
uh, from time to time, but they are still thriving, they are still producing more babies and it's not becoming a problem. Now I do think that these are one of the most perfect fish for a feature fish for a nano aquarium and what I mean by that is sort of 10 gallons and above. Now these are quite simple fish to keep hold of and they're less common than perhaps the um, Scarlet Badis or Dario Dario and I think they just offer something a little bit different. As similar they are to the Scarlet Badis, they are in a different family but very very similar fish. Now the males top out are about 1.3 inches and the females about 1.1 inches, so very very small fish, but they do appreciate a little bit of swimming space and like I said, a little bit like dwarf cichlids, they do create their own territory, so really important that you think about that before planning your tank. Now these are perfect fish to keep in a species only tank because they're not that common in the wild, so if you want to breed them then go for gold. But I would suggest that you either try and keep a species only tank where you keep you know, one male and then maybe three females or something along those lines. If you've got a big enough tank and you keep multiple males then go for it. But if you do want to offer tank mates, like in this tank I've got some uh, mosquito raspora as well as the bloody mary shrimp. And they are perfect, they don't have to compete for food. The um, raspora get a dried flake food which they feed at the top whereas the Darios get frozen or live food, which they eat at the bottom. So they don't have to compete each other for food, which is great. But because they can be quite slow to eat, you wouldn't want to keep them in a massive community tank with you know, really fast Tetras or you know, Danios or something like that, where they're not gonna get a chance to eat their own food. But like I said, they are micro of fish. So if you do have shrimp in there, then babies will get eaten. Anything can fit in their mouth, which is quite small, they will eat up. Even baby snails, like I mentioned earlier. So if you do have some dream shrimp and some you're really, really proud of and trying to breed, probably not the right choice for you. But for me, these are really rewarding fish, perfect for this sort of setup and really nice to have a feature fish in a nano tank. Now they do have really nice personalities and a little bit like dwarf cichlids to an extent and you'll see them sometimes chasing each other around and defending their territories. As long as that's not becoming too much and there's enough room to create their own individual territories, you should be okay. But I think they're such a nice, striking, different looking fish with you know their two-toned bodies with the red stripes, the cream body and then the nice black charcoal grey head. I wouldn't say they're quite a beginner fish just because sometimes they're difficult to take to certain foods but I would say they're sort of an intermediate fish and they're really adaptable, not too uh, sensitive to water parameters. Keep on top of your weekly water changes. I do about 30 to 40% on this tank once a week and that seems to do them well. And as they are territorial, they do stick to the bottom to mid ground area of the tank, so that's perfect with the Raspora, who tend to stay at the top. So something nice to add a bit of interest to the bottom of your tank. And there's something you don't see every day. They're not as common as the Badis Badis or the Scarlet Dario. And I think they just offer something a little bit different. But I hope you've learned a little bit about Black Tiger Darios today. Almost forgotten their name in this video. I hope that it's encouraged you to go out and research them for yourself. As always, don't just watch this video. If you're planning on buying any animal, go out and watch a wealth of videos. There's plenty of stuff out there on YouTube, as well as care sheets and various other things, Facebook group. But the more you research, the better equipped you'll be to look after these fish, which are very, very worth it. But I think that's enough for me waffling on for one day. As always, if you're new to this channel, the first video you're seeing, there's plenty of stuff around aquascaping, bioactive setups, reptiles, tropical fish, you name it. There'll be something for you in the channel, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. For those loyal followers, I have taken a break today on this video from the four foot terrarium we're building for my panther comedian Bert. We'll rejoin that in the next couple of videos, so don't worry. But as always, you can show me your support by hitting that thumbs up. Leave me a comment to show YouTube you enjoying this sort of content and allows me to make more videos like these. But I think that's enough of me walking on for one video, and I'll see you in the next.